multiple regression analysis, first developed by Sir Francis Galton in the 19th century. Yeah, it sounds scary, but it's really not that bad. In this video, I just wanna give you a quick overview of what it is and how you set it up. How you actually do it, well, that'll have to wait for a different video. Multiple regression analysis simply answers this question. How do these things, whatever they are, affect this thing, whatever it is? These things are called independent variables, and this thing is called the dependent variable. The dependent variable is what you're testing or what you're curious about. I always think it's helpful to see some examples. So let's see, first we need a dependent variable, something to research. I'm a big football fan and I would like to know what determines the career length of an NFL wide receiver? Well, okay, what could some factors be in a receiver's career? Those would be my independent variables. Perhaps average receptions per game or career receiving yards, career touchdowns, longest reception, height, weight. Okay, now notice that all of these data points are numbers. We can do multiple regression analysis with data that isn't numeric, but that's for another lesson. Let's try a different example. This time, I'd like to know what factors affect the life expectancy in countries around the world. So what could some of those factors be? I'm just brainstorming at this point, but perhaps literacy rate, percentage of urban residents, GDP per capita, population of the country, land area of the country. Okay, so I have a dependent variable now and some possible independent variables. The next step would be to write a model equation like this. Here you can see I've just made shortcuts or abbreviations and here's life expectancy, literacy, urban population, GDP per capita, population of the country, and the total land area of the country. And as you can see by the plus signs, I think that these variables would have a positive effect on the life expectancy, with the exception of population. Maybe I think that big populations are detrimental to your health. At this point, I'm really just hypothesizing. So now we need a spreadsheet. Here's where we set up the data. Actually, just gathering the data can sometimes be the most consuming part of the regression analysis. So you can see here, my dependent variable is in one column and my independent variables are in the following columns. This column here, it's not gonna be a part of the regression, but it's there to help me stay organized and provide some additional information. Now, when it comes to the spreadsheet, we need to remember three very important details. The first is that every cell is filled with a number. There are no blank cells. Number two, although you can't see it here, you'll need at least 30 rows of data to really get a good analysis. And number three, none of the cells can be populated with a formula. Each cell needs to be a typed in number. Okay, that's it. Now you know what multiple regression analysis is and how you set it up. Actually, the setup is the bulk of the work. So if you can get this far, hey, it'll be smooth sailing from here. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for running regression analysis. You'll be fine.